Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the eTrailer double eye leaf springs here on our enclosed trailer. Leaf springs are an essential component of your trailer suspension system. They're going to help support the load of the trailer itself and anything that's inside of it, as well as help cushion your ride. Your suspension is made up of several components, the main one being your leaf springs, then you're also going to have your hangers, which are going to hold your equalizer. If you have a tandem axle, like we do on our enclosed trailer today, next you'll have your bolts, your nuts, and then also your shackle straps. And then what holds all of this onto our axles is our U-bolts. If you're in need of some new suspension components, I kind of recommend just replacing all of it at once. That way you know everything is in good condition and you don't have to worry about going back and replacing extra parts doing all this extra work because to get any of these off, you really just kind of have to take everything off anyway. Um, if you are looking into it, what you're going to want to do for your leaf springs is to measure from the center of the eyelet to the center of the other eyelet. Now with ours today, these are kind of bent, so that's why they were really needing to be replaced. So they go a little bit further than what they would actually normally measure. So these would typically be 25 and a quarter and we're measuring about 25 and 3 eighths instead. So if you notice that you have that kind of issue, your springs are starting to flatten out, make sure that you go back just to size and get the correct one for what it would have been originally. For the shackle straps and your equalizers, it's going to be the same concept. You're going to be measuring from center of bolt to the center bolt or you can also, if you had those bolts already off, you could go ahead and measure center to center on the eyelets of those. As you can see with ours, they're already really worn in. You can see that there was a little bit of space between this. It wasn't fully tight, so that kind of rocks back and forth. On the inside, it's pretty much worn away. It's almost like it's been kind of rubbing against something. So that's a good uh, indicator that it's time to replace all of these components. That way you don't end up on the side of the highway with a broken down trailer. And it's also gonna be the same thing for your equalizer. You'd measure center to center. Here we have, it looks about seven and three quarters from center to center. And then also you can see there's more wobbling going on. This is kind of eating it up onto the top of our hole on our equalizer. So that bolt is gonna keep wanting to kind of slip around in there and you can end up having more damage to this. It could end up breaking your hanger and then also just falling apart itself. As far as installation goes, it is not a hard or challenging thing to do. It really is just kind of tedious and dirty as you can see. My hands are pretty gross. I definitely recommend wearing some gloves, some clothes that you don't care about. To start off our install, I've already gone ahead and lifted up our trailer and supported it with some jack stands. So it's nice and secure. I don't have to worry about it tipping one way or the other. And now I'm going to go ahead and break all of my wheels off so that way we can get to our suspension. And we're just going to repeat this for each other wheel. So now I've gone ahead and I've put some floor jacks under our axles. We're going to need to support those because the second they remove our suspension, our axles are going to want to drop down. On top of that, um, I do recommend using something that you can adjust. Sometimes when you're trying to mess with the suspension, you kind of need to move that axle up and down. And if you have something you can easily move, like a bottle jack or a floor jack, it just makes your life a whole lot easier. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and break off our shoulder bolts and our hangers. Um, to do that, you're going to want to make sure you have a breaker bar and a wrench, and you want to make sure that you use that breaker bar on the bolt head side. On ours, we have our bolt head on the inside of our trailer. On the outside, we have our nut. We want to make sure that we're pulling on that nut and not the bolt head. If that bolt head moves, it's got these little teeth on the actual bolt itself, and it bites into the hanger, and it'll grind that hole out. And that's what uh, it's going to damage the hanger if it does. So we don't want to do that because then you got to cut the hangers off and replace them. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my breaker bar on, my wrench on the nut side, and we'll start breaking these off. go ahead and use some penetrating oil if you have your nuts kind of really stuck on there all grimed up like that um, it is quite hard to get it off so go ahead and shoot it with some oil kind of let it soak a little bit and I'll kind of help now typically I would go ahead and replace or just undo every one of these shackle bolts 
in our shoulder bolts for our hangers. But since we're going to be replacing everything along with our leaf springs today, I'm just going to go ahead and get our hanger bolts out. Then we can just pull the whole leaf spring assembly out of the way once we get our U-bolts off as well. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove our U-bolts. Now, anytime you remove these, you are going to want to replace them. They start to mold to the shape of your axle once they're on there and torqued down. So once you take them off, it kind of wrecks them. So it's time to replace it. If you need to replace yours, then you're going to want to look at your axle capacity, find out exactly what it weighs. If you look at the or axle tag that's right here on our specific axle, it'll tell you the capacity right on it. Typically, I see them on the driver's side, but sometimes they're all the way over on the passenger side, usually just one end. And then you can use our fit guide to find the correct size for your needs. But we'll go ahead and break these off. You will want to kind of do them evenly. That way, when the plate kind of starts to come down, it's not going to kink one way or the other and prevent it on the other bolts from coming down because it can kind of pinch some of the other bolts if you get one side too loose. Now we have our U-bolts off and our axles are separated from our leaf springs. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the shoulder bolts on our hangers. And with that, you can just take a hammer and pop it right out. Let our axle drop free. And I'm gonna do the sides first and then we'll get the center. Now we have our old suspension out of the way, we can begin reassembling our new suspension, starting with our equalizer. Now on the inside, um, like I said before, there are teeth on these bolts, and if you let these kind of roll, it kind of chews that all up. Now on our side where we had the bolts, it is definitely chewed up, so if this sits in there, the bolt's going to keep spinning, and then it can wear on the hanger itself just like the leaf, uh, the shackle straps were on our old system. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around. I'm gonna do the bolt head on this side where it hasn't been pressed into yet. And then we'll tighten it down with our nut on the other side. It's also gonna make it a little bit easier when I go to hammer it in. I won't have to get under the trailer to hammer the bolt in place. So all in all, it'll be a much better fit going this way. Put that on and I'm gonna go ahead and just hand tighten on my nut. And then we can grab our hammer and hammer down on this side to get it stuck into place. Now that we have that fully seated into our hanger, we can go ahead and tighten it down. We do want to get it nice and tight, but not too tight because we don't want to pinch that hanger because we do need our equalizer to slide back and forth. As I'm tightening this down, I'm making sure that I use my breaker bar to hold my bolt head in place. Like I said before, you don't want to have those teeth ground out the hole in your hangers. So we can go ahead, we'll grab our leaf spring, we will grab two bolts and two shackles and then the lock nuts for it. I'm going to go ahead and slip two bolts through one of our shackles. Uh, it is going to have those teeth, so we will have to kind of press that in. Once we start drawing on it with our lock nut, it is going to kind of press that back into place. So we'll go ahead and slip one of our bolts into our equalizer. And we can slip our leaf spring in. It's okay that it's kind of off right now. We're going to fix that in just a sec once we get this all together. And we'll slip in our shackle strap. If you want, you can go ahead and flip the other side of the leaf spring up into the hanger just to kind of help hold it up in place if you're having a tough time kind of getting it on. But we'll go ahead and tighten our nut on. We'll start tightening this down. And while we tighten it down, we want to make sure that we aren't going too tight because this does have to kind of flex back and forth. But we also still need to tighten it down enough so that our teeth on our bolts bite into our shackle straps. Now that we've got this nice and tight, I still need to kind of draw that in some more. I'm going to go ahead and I can kind of hammer on that and that'll kind of start to loosen this side up. And I can just keep putting that pressure back on it by tightening it down and hitting it and just kind of going back and forth. An alternative to having to hammer in our bolts into our shackle straps under the trailer 
is to grab a vise, grab some kind of material. In our case, we just have a pipe that we had laying around that's gonna allow me to set the bolt in it and also hold up our shackle straps. And then a hammer, and you can just sit there and kind of hammer that down against that. And that's just a little bit easier because if you're hammering against the equalizer or the leaf spring itself, it's going to kind of jiggle on you. It's not really one to gonna wanna go in. So this honestly just makes it a lot easier. Obviously, you might not have this at home, but if you do, this is just a quick, easy way to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and just repeat the same process over here. Although on this side, I've already gone ahead and smashed in my bolts into my shackle strap. Pop on a new one. take just a little bit of convincing with the hammer. And then we can throw on our lock nuts. Next we're gonna go ahead and put our shoulder hanger bolts in. Kind of line up our leaf spring. I need to raise my axle just a little bit. It's kind of fighting me here. There we go. Press that into place. And then we're going to hammer these in just like before with our center, just so those teeth bite into our hanger. Next, we'll go ahead and put our lock nut on the back of that and tighten it down. And just like before, you want to make sure it's tight, but you don't want to have it too tight to where the axle spring can't move back and forth. Now that we have this bolt in and tightened down, we're going to go ahead and just do the same thing over on the other side. Next, we're going to install our U-bolts. Our tie plate right here is going to go on the bottom of our leaf spring stack. It's going to be a little nut right here, and that's going to sit in the center hole of our tie plate. And we're going to have it facing so that we have our bolts lining up right like that. We will pop our U-bolt over, and we will have to kind of Probably lower the axle just a bit so that it sits on top of our leaf spring stack on our uh, top of our stack right here. We're also going to have a little bolt that's going to sit through the hole on our spring seat. So I'm going to drop that down. If we need to, we can kind of adjust back and forth. There we go. Sitting on there. Drop it the rest of the way now. And then we can flip our tie plate over. And our U-bolts through. All right, we can push that one through. And then we can get our nuts started on here. That'll kind of help hold it in place while we get our other U-bolt in place. And we'll slip in our other U-bolt and the same thing. And then we can tighten this down and then torque it to the manufacturer's specifications. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and just repeat this process for each side. Now that we have this side done, we can go ahead and take our jacks over to the other side and complete the leaf spring suspension over there as well. Now that we have both sides complete, all we have left to do is throw on our wheels, put our lug nuts on, and then torque those down as well. Typically, you'll see a marker on the side of your trailer that tells you exactly what those need to be torqued down to. If not, you can go ahead and look at the manufacturer specifications for it and then that will complete your installation of the e-trailer double i leaf springs